Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Didn't uh, bring up OBS. Uh, Alright. Hello and welcome back. Let's go back into the game. Project Zomboid. Ten years later mod. Black Ops. Insurgent. Special Ops. Etc. Etc. You know the deal. We found ourselves the holy grail of settlements for a post-apocalypse. And... I also found an entire box of cereal, which I'm now going to greedily gobble up in a desperate attempt to bring my weight up to 75. In a world where food is relatively scarce. I still have that coffee from last time. It's uh, significantly colder. <laughs> but it's nice. It's a uh, cappuccino with some chocolate inside it. It's one of those instant coffees. It's nothing fancy. Uh, just like comes in a bag, pour hot water over it, and uh, it's done. But I really, really like them. Um, generally, I don't like coffee. But they have some really amazing flavours. Yep, I heard that. That's okay. Okay. Give me that pistol. Check magazine. Oh, it doesn't have any in, in, in the chamber, does it? Okay. Drop that. Ooh, hello. Stay low. Okay. Vitamins could be useful. If we get into a situation where we can't sleep for a while. <coughs> Those are all barricaded. And inside the barricaded door are some zombies. Okay. And there is a way in. At least I'm pretty sure there is a way in. I just need to be careful I don't run into a sprinter over here. Wait, wasn't this the door? Or did I miss it completely? It's the one next to this one. It's over there, isn't it? I just missed it completely. Um, but the owner of the house, or at least one of the residents, was a gun owner. As we just saw. So... Get regular zombie. And there's hope that there's some weapons in the bathroom. I... Doubt now that I've seen that it's a bathroom, but well, at the same time, get out of the tub and sit down. All right. Did you perhaps forget a gun in the drawer uh, or in the washing machine or something? No, no, they did not. <laughs> okay, just check on my bandages, and we can move. On. Uh, did I check this house? I should probably mark it somehow. So I know, but here's why I don't want to do that. The previous three buildings that I've marked were basically empty. The only useful thing I could get out of those buildings was occasionally some of them had um like a kitchen knife, or a muffin tray, or a saucepan or something. Yeah, check this house. And that can be useful later down the line when I get into actually cooking my own food and not just eating out of a can. Um, you do need those kitchen utensils and trays and you know baking trays and stuff like that. I will need those, but until then... It's 
actually not that useful. So, and there were only a couple, so realistically I could mark the houses as cleaned and never come back there ever again. These houses have plenty of stuff in them that I haven't looted that I could potentially need in the future, so I don't want to cross them off as I'm never coming back here again. So I guess the, the better all, I, mean, I could just cross them off and then as soon as I'm done with the neighborhood, remove all the markings, but it's too much work. I'd rather just sort of keep track mentally of which houses I've been to and which, and which ones I haven't. Um, so I've gotten down to, like, I've gotten, I've moved to these two now. Okay, where the hell did you come from, first of all? Second of all, make sure there's no feral ones, and then we'll go from there. Another cool hint for killing zombies. Um, try and kill them away from the road. Because one day, you're gonna need this road. And uh, when you do, driving over zombies actually damages the suspension of a vehicle. Yeah, I know, it's not ideal, but it does. And... Uh, D's bit, but not serious. Need antibiotics just in case. Oh, D's bit. Tan's waiting for us. Gas over there. This is a riverside. Yeah, turns out D being bit was indeed a big idea. Not a big idea. It was indeed a big problem. Although you, they did make it all the way to Raven Creek from there, so I'm assuming they had a car. That's why the gas station was marked. I think the zombification rate is something around two days, three days, maybe. Depending on how you um, live out those two or three days. Uh, if you rest, eat plenty of food, stuff like that, it can be up to five, I think. But at that point, you're just prolonging the inevitable. Hello. Oh. I'm kind of out so I can make plenty of oatmeal with that. Pop, I'm going to drink that immediately. How much more food do I need? 71 with two arrows going up. Like a bit more, probably. Like a box of mac and cheese more, I think. I think that'll do just fine. And then we can pick these up too. 43 kilos out of 58. I mean, I'm assuming these are in kilos. Weight units, if you want to be really pedantic about it. Um, okay. Uh, that's, that's okay. It's uh, certainly not ideal, but it's okay. I do really need to find a vehicle now, though, but we consult the to-do list. We no longer need to find more food, so we take that off the list, and the search, I guess, for the rest of the stuff we need continues. Look at that. This entire street is empty. Gee... I have legitimately never seen this, I don't think. And now that I've said that, I'm going to attract a horde towards me, but honestly, good. I should do that. And obviously, if, I complain, if I'm complaining that there aren't enough zombies, I can just fire off one single solitary shot from this uh, MP5 and... 
Well, we're gonna have plenty of company once once I do that, let's just say. But yeah, like I don't think I've ever seen a area rich with loot like this. With like residential houses and that's not in just like the middle of nowhere, but inside the city. Uh, town, again. Technically not a city, but yeah, you get the point. I don't think I've ever seen an area like this just completely easy mode. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not completely empty. That would be a w weird and I would suspect some kind of game-breaking bug or whatever. But it's just easy. There's like just a couple of zombies here and there that you can deal with. with I mean, hell, I could clear this out probably with my bare hands. Or more sp specifically, I guess, with my bare feet? Not bare feet, with my boots. Which doesn't sound good linguistically, but is, is a very um, accurate statement. Um, just, you know, unarmed, I could just push zombies over and then stomp them to death. That's one of the most effective ways of killing them, honestly. Um, especially early on. If you don't have any good weapons. Um, and yeah, I could probably do that to this area because there's just so few of them. There's like a couple per house, basically. And the houses are pretty gosh darn big. And then, like, look at this. I found a combat knife. Yeah, not the best weapon in the world, but... It's a freaking combat knife. Who cares? Gets the job done. It works. Okay. Now, that looks more like what I'm used to. Yeah, that looks more like there's infected here. Psst, over here. Shite. Alright, where did that guy come from? Genuinely, where did he come from? Where the hell did you come from? If that was a grabber or something, I would have been dead. Remind yourself that their overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Yeah, I know. I know. Really? I'll come back for that machete. What did I break now? Upper left arm scratched. Severe scratch, wow. And it's instantly infected. And then it's not infected anymore. Urgent military jacket. Uh, uh. <sighs> yeah, uh, well, that, that's what you get. Honestly, that's what you get. That's just fair. That's what you get for being overconfident. I knew it was bound to happen. It was just, uh, it's just a matter of time. And now I'm stressed out. I'm missing my stabs and swings and such. Jesus. You, you can't get complacent, that's it. It's, it's, you, you can't get complacent. I nearly died just then. All it would have taken was like one sprinter. And I fell to the ground. It would have gotten on top of me. Ooh, ah, misses. Yeah, I know, I know. It would have gotten on top of me. Ha ha. But for real. Would have gotten on top of me and... To be honest with you, I don't quite see how I could survive that. Where's my machete? Is it over here? I think it's over there.
You, you're the one I want to knock over. And stomp. Okay, that was very. <clears throat> Sorry, that was very, very clean. Okay, so you have some nomad boots, a nomad mask, hole in it. Nomad trousers, not terrible. Empty spiffo mug. I have to collect it. It's a spiffo mug. How do I not collect it? They are quite rare. You also have bread. And it's fresh. And you have thyme and butter and pepper and all things nice. Right, let's create a sandwich from an open can of sod. Deans! I did not hear you come up to me. I'll be brutally honest with you, what happened there is I had my hand off the keyboard. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Alright. Add open can of sardines. So it has extra sardines in there. Add butter. Add some pepper. Add some thyme. And I think that's it. Reckon that's all we Yeah, that's a good that's a good sandwich right there. That's a great sandwich right there. More than happy with it. Okay. Nomad backpack, capacity forty four, encumbrance reduction eighty nine. What about my backpack? Good. Uh, capacity 58, encumbrance reduction 90. Yeah, it is better in every way. I think it's the best backpack in the game. Pretty sure. So, I won't be looking to upgrade. Though I might look for a secondary one, just in case. You never know. But obviously that's when I find a more permanent place of residence. Need to check on my bandages a little bit more often now, because I don't want to get this latest wound infected. Uh, yeah, there we go. Alright. Let's check this uh, house now, I suppose. Do excuse the language, but that was literally just a bonk. Beef, I would like to consume that, please. Thank you. Fun fact, I just noticed butter doesn't expire. I assure you it does, but... Well, who am I to argue with the logic of the game? Says it doesn't expire, it doesn't expire. What can I do about that? Now, I think this is actually an appropriate time for me to tell you about my worst death in the game. Uh, it was the longest character I've ever had. Uh, he survived for, I think, as much as a couple of months uh, on four hour days, maybe even six hour days, something like that. I think it was like six hour days. Um, matter of fact, the more I think about it, the more sure I am it was six hour days. And he survived for a couple of months. So, yeah. Um, like, I don't know how many zombie kills, but probably like a hundred thousand, maybe like 50,000, something like that. I don't know, a lot. Um, I went to the military base and I died there, I think, with one character previously who also lived for, like, an absurdly long amount of time. Not as much. It was probably, like, two to three months. Two, three, maybe four months. Um, and then this one was 
more or less the same. It was like a little bit longer. I don't know the exact numbers, but you get the idea. And I did that. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the military base again, but I'm going to be more careful. And I went there again, and there were fewer zombies overall. And I came with more ammo and stuff like that. And I was like, it was, okay, I was like, this is great. Perfect. Let's let's see what, what we can do. Looted the place, found all the secrets that are on to be found in that base, uh, at least with the vanilla game, which isn't a lot, but yeah, still. I found the stuff, and I left the base. Found a house like this, just like that. Downstairs area is clear. I open the upstairs room and inside it is around 70 zombies maybe somehow all on top of one another I even know how it happened um, when zombies migrate off camera they don't exactly follow the rules of the land if you will um, their movement is different they clip through a lot of things because the game doesn't have time or doesn't have resources to calculate all the individual routes for the zombies so it will teleport them a little bit but some things it will still take into consideration so i guess in its infinite wisdom it calculated that the zombies can get inside that room but can't leave because the door's closed and then it somehow parked them all upstairs, and the moment I opened the door, it squeezed them through and on top of me. And the character died. I didn't want to use cheats to revive him, I'm not sure I'm sure that's possible. I didn't want to, like, continue that save or anything. I was gutted, because he survived for so long. But at the same time, it was such a Project Zomboid thing, right? He just died. He just died to a freak accident with like 70s zombies all jam-packed in a room. But it was such a cool story and it was like, it's probably to this day the most vivid memory I have of this game was just opening that room. And I think a part of me shudders even today every time I have to open a room I haven't seen through the windows of. But I'm pretty sure bugs like that aren't in the game anymore. But it was... In retrospect, the best decision I made was just to accept that death. Um, I could have, like, rationalized it, like, oh, well, it wasn't a real death because it was a bug and it wasn't my fault or whatever. Uh, you know, and if the game was working properly, the character wouldn't have died. And all of that's true, but still, it was so memorable, so iconic that I'm pretty happy with, with my decision to just keep playing, I guess at that point, and or not, not keep playing that character, but just move on, basically. Keep playing as... continue playing the game as, as a different character, and just, yeah. Accept that death, I suppose. That was, to me, that was, that was... At the time, it hurt, but in retrospect, that was the correct decision. And, uh, yeah. There you go. That character was so good with guns, too. I um, mean, at that point, I cleared out. I think I almost cleared out Knox Prison, too. Or, um, Rosewood Prison. As well. That was quite something. Right, let's eat this thing as well, and then... Remove this bandage, see if it's infected. No! Okay. Bandage that up. And we're good. Okay, I doubt I'll be able to find much in a bar like this, save for alcohol. And I don't really want to drink, because it'll make me sleepy. But I could potentially secure myself a nice spot in which I can read. Okay, no, I'm getting out of here. I 
I could hear more coming and I don't know what type they are and honestly I don't need whatever is in there so tell you what you can keep whatever the hell that was over there I am leaving Okay, lots of undead down there. I want to check this row of houses up here first. And then what is this? The sweet sea or something? Restaurant. Okay, now I'm seeing sort of more grouped up zombies. That's a feral. Okay, it is isolated though. Let's go and get it. Right, focus. <clears throat> yeah. I need to stretch. Yeah. All right. Yoo hoo. I love push to talk. <laughs> I love push to talk. I could pry this open. It'll take a minute though. Rather go in through the window, which I just realised is open. <laughs> okay. That's an empty. No cars, though. Um, not that I'm complaining. I've been extremely lucky with this area, and I suppose on an internal logic of the game, I don't know how this, how much of this is an accident, how much of this thought through. But on an internal logic of the game, it kind of makes sense. If the area is empty and has very few zombies in it, that means that the residents that were originally here aren't here anymore. How did they leave? Well, they took their cars, right? It just makes sense. Um, and I know the game thinks about stuff like this. Well, the game doesn't think, but... When designing levels and how stuff spawns in the game, I know the developers think about this as well. Um, and when they design like survivor stories and stuff like that, like the random things that you come across in the game, they think about all of these things and they, they factor them in when creating a world as much as possible, at least. Um, so... I don't know how much of this is by design. Raven Creek is a custom location, so I would assume that it being a passion project, it's kind of like more customized, I guess, in that sense. But yeah, um, I reckon that that there's a distinct possibility at all this was consciously done. Tell you what, though, I think I'm gonna make a quick break here. I had a close call and. Uh, well, I need to take care of some stuff IRL. A 30-minute episode I think we'll do for now. I'll make it up to you in the next one. I'm going to make it a little bit longer. Uh, the problem is I don't. I won't have much time to stop in the next one if I want to take out that horde and loot up over there. Basically, um, we're getting our weight up there to where it needs to be at a perfect 75. Actually, 80 I think is considered perfect. Um... I need to fix up this jacket somehow, and other than that, we've done great for ourselves. We found melee weapons. I haven't found a silencer or ammo, but that's going to take some time. Right now, um, starting, I guess, next episode, I'm going to focus exclusively on trying to find a vehicle, so I'm not going to loot houses as detailed as I'm looting these right now. I'm going to skip out on that for right now, because um, I can't carry much more. I mean, backpack is absolutely full. Uh, so I'm going to look around for some cars, um, an APC, an RV, anything really. I'll take anything I can find. 
that's functional. And then, um, should I fail to find that by, like, I don't know, afternoon um, in game time, I'm going to look for a nice quiet spot to sit out the rest of the night. Uh, the rest of the day, I suppose, and sleep through the night. And also I'm going to do a whole bunch of reading, which is all going to happen off camera. But yeah, I need to read some of those magazines. I need to read some of the books that I've collected so that I can uh, also I don't have to lug them around, I suppose. All right, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Like, subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, we'll stay tuned with the rest of the series and the content that I produce on the channel. See you all next time. Have fun. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to some more Project Zomboid, Spec Ops, Insurgent, on a secret mission to find the ever more secret military base, which uh, still don't know where it is, but you know, we're getting there one day. Um, I promise you that. Well, you know, unless I, unless I die, in which case, well, the promise won't, well, won't have mattered too much, will it, I guess, because, you know, I'll be dead. And you can't be upset at me. Uh, I'm ranting on, honestly, at this point. There's a, well, a, I would say a medium-sized, maybe, group of undead up ahead. We will need to take care of them. Two of them are tough. Uh, most importantly, there's no ferals. There was one there. We killed them last time. And we're continuing pretty much right where we left off from the previous episode. Uh, the main goal so far um, has been to find tools, food, weapons, stuff like that. And we found a fair bit of that. Right now, we're going to look for a vehicle. Um, because at this point, that's pretty much the only thing I need. Uh, that, and maybe ammo and like a silencer or something like that. Uh, if we can find a military checkpoint or really anything vaguely government related. It's a town the map for the town of Muldrow. Um, if we can find anything vaguely government related, chances are we're going to find some ammo and weapons in there, so I'm very interested in that, but other than the aforementioned firearms and I guess attachments for firearms, maybe stuff like that, I found pretty much everything else we need. Um, magazines, books, food, water, medicine, weapons, melee weapons. Um, yeah, that's, we have all of that. I'm very happy about it. It's just that uh, right now we need a vehicle. Um, oh, shame all the food's rotten. But what can we do? Sorry, I have a case of the hiccups. I don't think I've had that in literal years, I think. <laughs> I mean, last time I had hiccups, I was probably like a kid. Um, yeah, I don't think I had hiccups in, in a very, very long time. It's, uh, it's a new experience for me. Well, it's an old new experience for me, I suppose. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's kind of making me giggle. <laughs> yeah, I feel like a child that brings back memories, honestly, more than anything else. Just started as I started recording. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry about that. All right, let's. Uh, I said I wasn't going to loot these buildings as thoroughly, but this is the last one in this sort of area, and I think I might as well go through it. Uh, flour and all that, all of it's very useful, but not for me right now. I can't really afford to... Keep all that in my backpack. This is a great spot. Matter of fact, this is a perfect spot. It's literally a perfect spot. It's close to the well up there. I mean, look at that. It's, that is, wow, that is literally ridiculous how good that is. 
All right, tell you what, I'm going to mark it off on the map as... Uh, well, literally, close it off. So, there you go. Uh, I'm just going to put, like, a... Do I have a door symbol or something? No, I don't think so. I think I have a lock symbol somewhere. These are really tiny on my end. I can barely see them. Uh, need it a little bit. Right. Uh, it's too big, but I can reduce it. Put like a small symbol in there, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. I'll remember what it was when I, uh, when I look back on this at some point. Ooh, okay. That is a lot of them. I don't need to be dealing with that right now. Cars. I need cars. And there's multiple over here. There's even an APC. It doesn't look... Well, it doesn't look exactly new, but... I can get it going. <laughs> With the cargo space in it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That would be... Truly something special, okay. There's one feral down. The rest of these are just regular... Interesting how the machete is considered a long bladed weapon. I would assume that. I suppose if knives are short bladed weapons, this one you do swing, so I, I kind of understand at the same time. Holy hell, this thing has a key in it. Um, um, okay, it, it also has an XM214 minigun. Not. Entirely what I expected to find inside an APC. Uh, certainly not inside one. You know, maybe maybe mounted on, but n not not quite inside an APC. No, but you, you know, still happy we found it. Um, okay, yeah, right. APC, minigun, relatively clear area, there's a bit of a horde down there, there's a bit of a horde up there, but in between the two is me, and more importantly, my newly found APC. I think that even rhymed. So, uh, oh, that, I, I got in and expect that. So, there's also a Magnum Research Desert Eagle Mark 19, I, I suppose. It's in terrible condition. The minigun is also in god-awful condition. So... At least... I know that the whole thing isn't rigged for my success. Um... You know, it's it's just believable enough, I think, is what I would call it at this point, because, you know, the APC is there, it even has a key inside it, and it has a little bit of fuel, but the battery's dead. Okay, fair enough, right. And then lights off. Uh, device options. Requires an nearby power source. Yeah. The battery on this thing is completely dead, isn't it? 
where is even the engine on this thing over here? Right. Um, beautiful thing about these custom vehicle mods and stuff like that is you can actually see the condition of the car and, well, in this case, the APC, I guess, but actually see it when you're checking it out. Um, it's not in good shape. It's not drivable. I'm sorry. Brakes are shot to hell. Um, battery's dead. It's it's really not good. Uh, this car, on the other hand, sort of neither here nor there. Um, no key though. And my upper left arm is infected. Lovely. I want to remove the bandages from my head. And my upper right arm. Because that's... No, that's still infected. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming because it's still infected, it's still healing. And I shouldn't touch it, but at least one of my wounds is... Gone, if that's the correct terminology. Okay, cotton balls, alcohol wipes. Love to pry this open, thank you very much. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Try the other end. Beautiful. Right. No use though, but still. Okay, so, it would appear that none of these cars really are any good, but at the same time I kind of expected that. Maybe though. Maybe we can fix one of them with parts from the other ones. And the problem is they're in the middle of the street. It'd be a risky thing to do. And I can't exactly push them over to where I need them to be. And I just realized one of the headlights of this thing is broken. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I mean broken, right? It's like completely busted, not just the light, but the actual... Yeah. Um, I think the best option for me is to build a basement here, inside the city somewhere. Um, where I'm going to do that, I'm not sure. How I'm going to do that, how am I going to collect the materials and stuff? Well, actually, I have an idea on how to collect the materials, um, and where from, and stuff like that. So I'm not completely... Shall we say without a clue on that end, but... Whether I can actually do that... I guess remains to be seen. This was... In the restaurant. Now, usually early days of the outbreak. This would be a great spot to pick up some... Oh, I don't know. Food, obviously, but probably, like, if you want some knives or, uh... 
Even some non-perishable food like this evaporated milk or, uh, I don't know. Water bottles, chips, fresh produce, all that good stuff. Great spot for that. Apparently, though, let's bait right now that it's in. This is, uh. Yeah, it's, it's not gonna work. <laughs> Stuff has been here for years. It's, uh. Well, to be honest with you, it's a miracle I can still identify that cabbage is a cabbage and, that, you know, so on and so forth. So. Tools are good though, there's a hand axe, I already have one, but a hammer would mallet saw. I already have those. If I didn't, I would have picked up most of the tools I need from here. Hmm. One of these days I'm gonna come into one of these buildings and start disassembling everything. Um because yeah, apparently that's how you learn stuff about carpentry by just disassembling absolutely everything you can find for a good day or two. And then with all that knowledge, eventually you learn how to make a, a basement in the middle of nowhere. I, I, the most worrying thing for me is how am I gonna dig it out? That's, that's for me, that's the most worrying thing, I'll be honest with you. Infected, keep walking up on me. Hmm. Alright, well, I'm gonna need to think about this for a minute. Where am I gonna get a car? And chances are I'm not gonna be able to find one that's in working condition. Right, I'm gonna need to find several cars and then put together one. And I was kind of prepared for that initially, but the main problem I have with that is that oh, there's chocolate too, probably. It's gonna take a while to get all that done. It doesn't matter that it's going to take a while, it's going to be unsafe because the areas aren't cleared and be all kinds of problems. But even if I manage to sort of sneak my way past all the mechanic work and repairing and, you know, taking the battery from this car, putting it in that car, taking the wheels off, taking the... I'm going to take the wheels off, I'm going to need a, a wrench and some tools and a jack, probably. Which I'm going to need to find, but even if I do all of that, I don't know if I know enough about cars to actually put one together from bits and pieces. So I need one that's in relatively decent condition, and I need the parts that are broken to be easily replaceable. Or I need just a functional car. Um, and at this point, I'm kind of thinking it's going to be easier to find just a fully functioning vehicle than a car that meets all the right criteria, right? Where the difficult to repair parts are functional, but the easy to repair parts are, are not. Or easy to replace, really. I'm not repairing anything. And yeah, I think that's, that's as weird as it sounds, that's more unlikely, or rather it's more unlikely than we're going to find something like that compared to just a, a regular fully fixed car. Holy moly, there's a feral one over there. Alright. Come on. Do 
four, five, seven, and eleven. That's a lot of them. Uh, let's get to it. Actually, hold on, I need to make just a quick break. A second. And we're back, sorry about that. We're back just in time as this thing charges me. Uh, that's probably a good thing, in all due honesty, because it's the only feral in that group up north. Is that north? Yeah, I think it is. It's, uh, I think that, um, directions are fixed. So, north is... Actually, no, if that's, that's, not, that's not really north, but, like, this would be north, right? That would be, um, uh, like, west... Northwestish. Yeah. Not that it really matters that much. Okay. I don't want to make the same mistake again. There we go. Good, and then we have just a couple of stragglers, so to say. One crawler. Let's get you next. And the last one. Lovely. Okay. I think I'm going to use the knife a little bit more now, because, uh, well, I do have, I think, two extra machetes? We can check. This is one. No, I have one extra machete. Didn't I pick up a second from that? Did I mess up and not pick up that extra machete? I can go back and check, it's nearby. In fact, I think I will. Right, antidepressants. Never know when I might need those. Yeah, I'm I'm sorry to be doing this. I don't want to genuinely. I don't want to backtrack like this, I want to keep going forwards. I'm find the car and all that good stuff, like I mentioned. That's a very big horde that migrated here. Now, luckily for me, There's no ferals here, but at the same time, okay, that was lucky. This one's tough, and this one's tough. No, this one's a regular one. This one's tough. Okay. There you go, come on. Okay, that was risky, that could have been a lot worse. This one had a combat knife, I mean, I guess I'll pick that up, it's... It's a weapon like any other. Right, come on. This guy too. Well, this. I refer to them as guy because it's a zombie. It's not human anymore. It... Depending on uh, 
the lore are usually there, I think. Most of the time they're mushrooms, technically. That's a fungal infection. Uh, I'm not just talking about Last of Us, it's the same, I think, in The Walking Dead. Uh, at least the comics. And that was the, the explanation that it was a mushroom or some fungus infection that came from outer space. Uh, and that's how it explained the whole thing, which is probably the most... I mean, it's not realistic, but it's probably the explanation that makes the most amount of sense. If you think about it a little bit. Still doesn't make sense, don't get me wrong. Which, I mean, I guess if it doesn't make sense, then, then, then why bother try and make it semi-realistic? I, I get that, but... At the same time, if you want to think about it a little bit, then fungal infection and reanimation is probably the closest thing to it being at least somewhat sensible. And then it wasn't here, it was in the one upstairs. Can't believe I didn't pick up that machete, or I, I did, and... I don't know. Yeah, it was here, and I picked it up. Okay. Oh well, um... Frick, I mean, I guess I was wrong. Don't know what else to say. I could have sworn I picked like one more up from a zombie somewhere that I killed. I don't think I checked these cars. Ooh, there's a gun case. Hey. Okay. Also a lug wrench, which I'm gonna need if I want to repair some of these cars. Yeah, I know, I know, but Smith and Wesson M327. I like that. I like that quite a bit. I want to operate this radio, see if there's anything in there. Wait. Uh, right on. Then, why does it say distance meters? Oh, because it's for communication with others. I have the emergency thing. Not saying anything. Alright, good. So. Does that mean I need to get rid of something? A long metal bar. I don't need that. It's 1.8 kilos, so it's going to be just as much as this thing, almost. And I can get rid of this. Alright, just a second. Yeah, sorry about that, like, third interruption this episode, or second one interruption, uh, second interruption this episode, but there was someone at the door I needed to answer that. Now, um, okay, good. That, that, that's, that's basically it, then. I can unequip this. Put it in the backpack. Which takes a while, apparently. <laughs> then, let's see if I can't open this. Or this. Or this, ultimately, I suppose. These cars look in... I don't want to say alright condition, but they look drivable at the very least. Unfortunately, I don't know how to hotwire them. Very unfortunately, I don't know how to apply them. But that's fine. Let's see, what about this one? This one's locked too. Try open. Jesus, come on out. There we go. Just another Louisville map. Or 
unfortunately still can't fire it up. Um, I can, however, show you the size of Louisville. Or Louavalu, as I think the official pronunciation is, but no. Um, as you can see, the place is bloody massive, and Raven Creek is, I think, a little bit smaller, but you can sort of see just how much there is here. Actually, it might be a little bit bigger, I don't know. I think the, like, urban center area of um, Raven Creek is a little bit bigger, but overall the city's a little bit smaller, if that makes any sense to you. Like, I think Raven Creek's a little bit more urbanized, is what I mean. Because um, Louisville, or Louisville, or Luavalu, whatever, has uh, more outskirts and more, um, sort of, rural-ish areas. I guess. I don't know why I put the crowbar away. I still need it to open all of this stuff. And again, no keys. Can't drive it. I mean, that makes sense, don't get me wrong. Not complaining about it. March Ridge. I don't think I read this map. There we go. He's on this one either. There's nothing but a garbage bag <laughs> inside. It's, uh... Okay. Right. Bandage got dirty again. Do I remove the stitch on this thing? I think I do. Oh, no. Probably not yet. See if I can disinfect it with just alcohol wipes again. Like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. Hey. Hello? Oh, well, that woke it up. It's just, it woke it up in kind of the wrong direction. You understand what I mean? Uh, it's 22 LR pistol. I don't need it. Side. Let's see what kind they are, the regular zombies, all right. Now that I've realized I only have one machete, or I only have one extra machete. Nah, you know what? Stay in there. You're happy in that. I'm happy with you in that. Stay, don't worry about it. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. Um, what happened to you? Shame it's busted. Genuine shame it's busted. This would have been a lovely mode of transportation, as they say. Yeah. The Oshkosh P19A, at least that's how I think it's pronounced. Oh, no. A 
feral over there. Two ferals over there. Okay, yeah, this. This is where I am. Uh, <coughs> this is where I just kill one, and then I leave. I'm not fighting two, well, actually three feral ones, but I would have to take on two at the same time at the very least. And that is, well, in all due honesty, ridiculous. So, no, <laughs> this is not something I'm going to be doing. No, thank you very much. No. All right, let's put this crowbar away. Um, and I can put this hand torch away, too. I don't need it right now. I don't need it in my pocket. I'll just take it away. I'm trying to reduce my overall weight down a little bit. Of course, the ideal way would be to just dump stuff from the bag. And I will... I just can't do it right now. Uh, but I will soon. Now, this Spiffo truck I checked, I think, already. Stuff up here, not so much. I think my best option right now is to backtrack to where I was a minute ago and check out that van I saw, like, down south of... Those crossroads that I that I cleared. Basically following this, shall we call it Miracle Alley. Okay, I'm gonna jump this because I've cleared this area before and I know what to expect down here. Uh, there's a lot of backtracking now happening, I, I am aware of this. Um, oh, I could have entered through here, I, didn't, I forgot about this, yeah. So like I said, there's, there's a lot of backtracking happening right now, but that's okay, considering my overall situation, which is not phenomenal. Uh, yeah, see, there's, there's always more to crawl from under somewhere and make it past some kind of corner and then... Yeah. Can I surprise you with their presence, I suppose? I knew it was there, that didn't scare me. I was, I was ready. To be completely honest, I wanted to uh, get them off the road. Because I do intend on finding a car eventually. And driving it too, if you can believe that. Alright, some fat, some decayed, some tough. Nothing I can't handle. Come here. Let's begin. Actually, you're all in a neat queue over here. I can deal with you with a knife. This isn't the optimal way of handling things, by the way, mainly because of the skill set. Um, you want to be leveling one instead of two at the same time. But I do have faster skill acquisition, generally speaking. Uh, I have a boost on that in the settings. And overall, I think it makes sense. I mean, I spawn with both. I'm gonna use both. Even if it isn't the most optimal strategy. Plus, I think it's I mean, it's not the most effective thing combat-wise, but resources-wise, it kind of is. Well, it is if I want to keep using bladed weapons, which is knives and uh, machetes, katanas, stuff like that. Need to kill this guy. Quick. There we go. Uh, I think, in my modest opinion, and this is a controversial one, but I think, in my modest opinion, blunt weapons are the best in this game. I would say blunt weapons are, are just superior to bladed weapons most of the time. They tend to have better durability. Um, at max level, they tend to perform pretty much the same as bladed weapons, katanas, and stuff like that. Um, 
it's you're not guaranteed a one hit kill but a one hit kill can happen very very often and so it's not just whether in terms of raw damage and, and you know like killing power and, and stuff like that i think the katana is technically the best weapon in the game just because of the damage it does but at max skill level a crowbar is comparable to a katana in its killing power probably a bit less occasionally you'll need to, you'll need to hit zombies twice but it doesn't matter because the bloody thing just won't break whereas a katana breaks rather easily and then it's the same thing with machetes and knives i mean knives will break more easily but i don't use them for the killing power i use them because they're expendable and i can just get a new one if this one breaks machetes are rarer so i use them only for bigger groups for ferals and stuff like that or i will probably more and more eventually um, and then there's more now than there was a minute ago but look at that car look at that car and I think there's a truck down there as well yeah belonging to the news station yeah okay I need to see if I can't cheese this somehow. I'm kind of doing it already, just not consciously. Okay, I don't like the range of this knife. Long-term plan be damned. But that said, special place in my heart, for no gameplay reason, it belongs to the spear. Spears, because you can craft them from trees that you cut down very easily. Now, the issue with spears is they break after a couple of kills, so you need a ludicrous amount of them in order to actually do anything, so... Yeah, spears aren't great because of that, but you also notice that I use double durability on most weapons, and with spears it tends to make them a bit overpowered. More overpowered than a katana? No, but at the same time they're infinite, so... Infinite weapons like that tend not to be the best overall because of their limitless nature shall we say but at the same time I don't know it's like It kind of makes sense for me that they would be so good. Because it's a sharp stick, and you're aiming for the brain, right? So you just sort of thrust, and you've hit the brain. And that's it. Whereas with a hammer and with a baseball bat, it sort of feels like it would take more effort. Especially if it's like a you know, rotted away corpse and stuff like that. It feels like, yeah, I hit the brain, and I feel like it'd be relatively easy to do with a spear. And... On top of that, like, okay, the, the more you use it, the better you are, the more accurate you are with it, so you'll be able to find the brain more easily, I guess, as weird as that might sound. Then, okay, but on top of that, then they break, like, every two or three kills. Why would they? It's a wooden, sharpened stick. Okay, it's not exactly a metal rod, I understand. It wouldn't have as much durability as a crowbar or an aluminium baseball bat or something like that. But 
But at the same time, right, it's like... It wouldn't exactly break instantly, would it? I feel like you could get a fair bit of use from it. Even if it is just a hastily made spear from, you know, someone that's not really proficient at crafting spears. A well-made spear will last exceptionally long amount of time. Like those medieval weapons, right? Like a, a proper spear that's made by someone who knows what they're doing. Yeah, that will last you a, a very, very long time. But even the simpler ones, like the more... The... how do I put this? The less of a spear, more of a sp sharpened stick type weapons. I feel like even they would... Okay. I bum rush you. I bum rushed you, and that's way too many coming from over there. Okay, need to get out of here. Ooh, that is way too many coming to get me. Okay. Okay. Uh question is, how do I lose them? Do I go in the back alleys over here and try and sneak around? Okay, I think that would be the best option, honestly. Because they're going to follow me into here. Some of them are going to continue that way. None of them are going to be smart enough to come all the way over here. I don't think. It's ten years later, and there's holes in the fences. Of course there are. Ooh, I'm just glad I haven't run into a feral. Because I haven't checked this part of the map very well at all. Okay. Just a few regular zombies, you can take care of them. Now, let's begin fighting. Okay, good. 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 see more over there. See more up the street, too. Geez, some of them haven't left this place. Yeah, stragglers are dangerous, man. I talked about this already. There's too many of them. They can lead the others back. How's it going, buddy? You fix it on opening that. And now there's some inside. Okay. I don't think I had that Google map. Right. Can't open it, unfortunate. No idea where this thing came from. Oh, it was here somewhere, wasn't it? it must have moved eventually.
Okay, well this uh, machete is nearing the end of its life. Again, yeah, I know, I'm just missing one more bit of the map. Well, two technically, right? Very big city. Do not want to go there. Not really. Well, unless I have to, but... Ideally speaking, I don't really want to go there. Alright, come this way. Tell you what though, I think we've been hacking away at these zombies enough for this episode. I'm gonna kill the last few here and uh, think about formulating a plan to try and get some of these vehicles operational. Or I'll we'll have to check that truck as well, but I need to sneak past this horde and not attract any from down here or over there because there's groupings being formed now. Alright, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe down below if you enjoyed the video. Want to stay tuned with the rest of the series and in general the content that I produce on the channel. I'm gonna try and open these cars next time and see if any of them are in drivable condition. Until then, have fun, take care, and bye-bye.